Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. Uh, this week I'm going to tackle this large burl that I received from a friend in my wood turning guild. Uh, the burl was just too large for him to do on his lathe so I cut one of the large pieces off and he's going to work with the smaller pieces. Now this is a soft wood burl, tamarack, and it's still a bit wet. I'm just going to take this and just see. Yeah, it's around 23-24% moisture, so that means I'm going to have to rough it out, let it dry. I might throw it in my kiln for maybe three or four weeks, just because it's softwood, it, it dries quite quickly, and uh, see what happens. Now, you can see here the tamarack doesn't have a lot of figure in it. There's a small crack here, which hopefully is okay. It's going to be fairly plain, but uh, but it's a nice large size and there'll be live edge around most of it, so it should look pretty good. So I'm going to start out by finding the center with this large compass. And this area is fairly flat. So I think I'll be able to just use a faceplate on this to start it out. I always like to pre-drill my holes and I tend to use as large of a screw as I can. These are probably number 12s or number 14s, fairly large screws. The bark is really loose on this piece, so I may as well just try to take off as much of it as I can. Oh, look what I found. Some ugly white kind of bug thing. Looks kind of like a grub. Anyway, I definitely need to take the bark off now. It's coming off relatively easy, and I, I did actually find three more of those ugly white bug things. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they are. Some kind of a larvae, larva. Kind of looks like a caterpillar without any fur on it. I see there's some seams in the bottom of this and I'm hoping that they aren't going to give me any trouble. I guess if they do, I'll have to fill them with epoxy, but I'm hoping we can work around them. I'm just going to use a 5 8 inch bowl gouge to rough this thing out and start creating a tenon as well. I want to create a nice large tenon so I get most stability when I turn this around. So I'm actually using the number six jaws on the one-way stronghold chuck. Uh, they're very large. I like to use that for coring and any of my larger pieces.
The shavings are coming off really easy on this piece because it's wet wood. And fortunately the shape of the burl is almost bowl shaped already on the bottom so it's not really taking a lot of shaping. I like to face off the top surface of pieces like this just so that I can see what the thickness and shape is going to look like at the very top of the piece. Without that, you kind of have to use a little bit of judgment. So fortunately, I can get underneath with my banjo and make a few cuts there just to roughly level it off so I know where the top of the piece is going to be all the way around. This little curved area here where the bowl goes into the flat part at the top is always a very tricky area to get. So I'm actually cutting in the wrong direction just because it's a little bit easier for me to see the shape. And I can kind of get away with it because the wood is wet, but normally I would cut the other way. And of course if this was dry wood and I was making my final cuts, for sure I would cut the other way. Now there's the overall shape on the bottom of the piece. It looks pretty good for a roughed out piece. There's a little bit of live edge, which is what I'm looking for. Now here's those large jaws on the chuck that I had mentioned earlier. The number six aluminum jaws that One Way makes for their chucks. You can also get large jaws from, uh, from Vicmark for their chucks as well though. Now because the wood is wet and it's cutting relatively easy, I'm just going to core out some of the wood. I know it's fairly plain and might not give me a very attractive piece, but hey, maybe I can just save a few pieces out of here. And it saves a little bit of turning time as well. So here I'm using those Corpro carbide cutters. They just do a great job of slicing through this wet wood. The nice thing with this hollowing system is it has a support rest underneath the cutting blade and there I've just put it into the slot and it just gives it a lot more stability when you're making these cuts to core out a piece.
You might notice I'm using tailstock support here. It's a way safer way to do coring. And for particularly when you're doing large pieces like this, it's just so much safer to have that uh, tailstock there to support it. And I'm using the one-way coring system and I'll be able to get two cores out of this. You saw me take the one out. Now this is going to be the, uh, the next one. So out of this overall burl, I'll have three pieces. Now I'm just going to roughly shape the uh, top surface of the burl to try to get an even consistent wall thickness throughout the piece and get it ready for drying. Here are the three pieces I was able to get out of the burrow. Normally I would put end seal on these, but because the grain goes in all directions and there's a lot of live edge stuff and possibly some cracks that need to be filled, I'm just not going to use the end seal. I'm going to finish up the video here, just putting all of these pieces into my homemade kiln. These will sit in here for a couple of months and uh, the temperature I usually use is somewhere between 28 degrees and 32 degrees C. So stay tuned for part two of the video. In the next video I will uh, take these out of the kiln and finish turn all of them.